The Bible says, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. It's very important that we hear the word of God, that we listen to it, that we read it. But that's not enough. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. If we listen to it and we are very acquainted with it and we can answer questions and pass a test, but we're not doing what it says. We're just fooling ourselves. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Let me tell you about three men who heard God's word, but they had three different responses. All three of these men are found in the book of Jeremiah. All three of them are kings. King number one was King Hezekiah. Hezekiah heard the word of God. The prophet Micah pronounced a judgment against the land. And the king heard. He not only heard, but he humbled himself. I can imagine him getting down off his crown, off his throne, laying aside his crown, and humbling himself. Now, he had heard the prophet say, the prophet Micah had said, Jerusalem will be plowed like a field where once there was a proud, prosperous city, the capital city of Jerusalem. Jerusalem should be plowed like a field. An enemy army would come, defeat the city, burn it down, tear down the burned walls, move the stones, and just plow it. And the king heard. He was afraid. He believed God. He turned to God for mercy. And God spared the city, and Jerusalem was not plowed like a field. That was king number one. King number two is another king, also ruling from Jerusalem. His name was Jehoiakim. There's a Jehoiachin, Jehoiakim. But this is Jehoiakim. He heard the word of God. And boy, he got angry. Someone tells him what the prophet, Uriah, you're also called Uriah, said. And boy, the king, you can see he's angry. He said, go get that prophet. And so the officers left the king's presence. Off to pursue. Off to arrest the man of God. Here they go. The prophet of God heard. He ran. In fact, he ran all the way to the land of Egypt. The king's officers pursued him. They captured him. They arrested him. They brought him back to the king, and the king executed the man of God. Murdered him. What had the prophet done? Well, he'd preached the word of God. And the king executed the man of God and did not even really give him a decent funeral. He had him... Buried in the graves of the common people, it says. Here are some of the men dumping the, the dead body down in the grave. Boy, this king is a wicked man. He murders the prophet of God. And there are some people who hear God's word, and you tell them what the Lord says. Boy, they get all angry. Maybe you've had that happen. You've told somebody the word of God and just told them what the Lord says, and they got angry at you. You're just the messenger. That's what the king did, King Jehoiakim. God gave him another chance. This time the prophet, Jeremiah, gave him a word from God, but Jeremiah did not tell him himself. <laughs> Somebody else brought it to the king and a message. You can sort of figure out why. Uh, the king, you could not trust him. So somebody else brought the roll, the scroll, the word of God to the king. And when the king heard it, boy, he got so angry He gets the word of God, 
He got a pen knife, began to cut the Word of God up, cut the scroll. And it was wintertime, and they had a fire going, fireplace. And he began to cut the Word of God up and throw it into the fire, burning up the Word of God. When you talk about a rebellious, wicked man. Now, did he hear the Word of God? Well, yes, he heard. But he got rebellious, killed the prophet, another time, burns up God's Word. Let me tell you what happened to him. He not only died, God's judgment came. And you remember what he did to the man of God? It didn't even give him a decent burial. Well, here's the kind of burial he got. He got the burial of a donkey, it says. Dragged out of town. Can you imagine the leader, the king, the leader of the country being dragged down the street? People standing around watching. Maybe holding their nose. Pointing at him. Say, look at there. Did they give him great honor and say, oh, his majesty? No. Uh, did not give him the honor that a king would ordinarily expect. And they not only dragged him outside of the city, they dragged him and dumped him out past the city walls. Now the city of Jerusalem had walls around it. And outside the walls was the city dump. They would dump the trash and the garbage and, the, and the, dump the dead bodies uh, of the animals and the refuse and so forth. And that's where they dumped the king's body. In the, in the daytime, it's out there in the sunshine, in the heat of the day, in the night, in the frost. Can you imagine the bugs and the flies flying around, the vultures flying overhead, and people looking over the wall and say, look at there, there's the king. Isn't he a royal sight? There's the king who heard God's word, got angry, killed the prophet, burned up God's word, and now he's really brought to shame. And he reminds me of people who hear God's word, they refuse to repent, they go their own stubborn, disobedient way. Yes, and the book of Daniel says in chapter 12, some will be raised to everlasting life, and some, these rebellious and disobedient people, will be raised to shame and everlasting contempt. Uh, the people just had contempt for him, uh, put him to shame. And that's, what it, what, that's a little faint picture of what hell is like. Raised to shame and everlasting contempt. In the last verse or two of the book of Isaiah, it says from time to time they'll go forth and look at the carcasses of those. Their worm will not die and the fire will not be quenched. And Jesus quoted that passage from Isaiah. In Mark chapter 9, he said, Where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Jesus is talking about hell. That's what it's like for people who just continue to go on, go on their stubborn, disobedient way, rebelling against God. So we've had two responses. Two men, two kings. King Hezekiah, he heard God's word. He humbled himself when he heard the judgment of God. And God spared the city. Blessed Hezekiah. And then number two was Jehoiakim. He heard God's word. Yes, a lot, of his, a lot of us have heard God's word, but that's not enough. Are you doing what God says? The king got angry, arrested him, killed him, buried him there in the graves of the common people. God gives him another chance. He still hardens his heart, burns up God's word. And you saw the judgment that came to King Jehoiakim dragged out the burial like a donkey would have, his carcass dumped outside the city walls. Now, king number three, the third kind of response. The last king of Judah, the last one to reign from Jerusalem was King Jehoiakim, excuse me, King Zedekiah. That'd be easy to remember. He's the last one, Zed, Zedekiah. He called the prophet Jeremiah one day, behind closed doors, he said, is there any word from the Lord? 